Hello everyone. Okay, we are starting with the DBE, Department of Basic Education, paper two from November 2019. Okay, I'm going to try to get these videos out as quickly as possible for these papers because I understand that we're getting close to um, final exams, but I've had a bit of a hectic couple of weeks, so um, hopefully I can quicken my pace with the videos. But let's just see what the instructions say. Importantly here, um, it talks about diagrams are not necessarily drawn to scale. This is important because in geometry, sometimes some students tend to take the diagram that's been given quite literally. And that sometimes can lead to errors because you, you start thinking that certain things are 90 degrees because they look like 90 degrees and they're not, right? This is very important. Um, let's just see, um, answers will not necessarily be awarded full marks. Um, okay, so basically work out, um, make sure that you are adding in your reasons, make sure that you're giving as much information as needed because an answer by itself doesn't necessarily mean that you'll get the marks, okay? And remember with geometry in this paper, you have to give reasons to what you're doing, right? You can't just be writing out like copious amounts of of mathematics without the reasons because geometry is all about reasoning okay copious means a lot sorry if i'm using words that are not necessarily accessible okay let's jump into question one so this is a stats question okay um and what's important with stats in the syllabus is that we know how to use our calculator right because our calculator is very helpful in, in finding various sort of statistical measures that we need okay so it says the table below um, shows the monthly income of six different people and the amount in rands um, that each person spends on their monthly repayment for motor vehicle. Okay, so the monthly income, right? This is our X value, okay? And our monthly repayment in rands, okay? So you can see obviously, or well, not obviously, because some people do overspend, but generally the monthly repayment here, you can see is less than the amount that they're earning. So it's only a proportion of what they're earning is going towards that because they have other expenses which need to, and the money needs to be allocated towards those expenses. Okay, so uh, let's read the first question. It says, determine the equation of the least squares regression line for the data. Now, when I say the least squares regression line, you must be thinking, okay, let me go to my formula sheet. Here it is. There's my formula sheet. And let's see if we can find the least squares regression line. Ah, look, there it is. Okay, so we should be thinking, okay, we want to get y equals a plus b x. Is that right? Oh, no, don't put the copy on the x. Okay. Perfect, right? So that's what you should be thinking. So what we're going to do is we're going to input this into our calculator, input our data, right, or our data set into our calculator, and then we can find A and B, right? And remember, you don't have to find a value for X and Y because you're finding a general formula, right? And then whatever X is will help us determine Y. But in this case, they specifically want us to find A and B and write it in this form. Okay, so get your calculator, right and go into so press mode go to stat right and we want to find the least squares the least squares regression line which is two okay then it gives us this table okay so what we're going to do now is we're going to input all the data that we have right we're going to input that um and then we're going to find these various measures so the most important thing here is that you put um, your data incorrectly. So I'm going along this way for my x value. So I put in the 9,000, put in the 13 and a half thousand, 15,000, 16 and a half thousand, 17,000 and 20,000. Okay, put in all my x values. Let's now go to our y. 2,000, 3,000, 3,500, 5,000, 200, 5,000, 500, and 6,000. Okay, so now I have that. Now you can just press the on button. You might be like, oh, I lost all my stuff. You didn't, don't worry. Then we go to shift, press shift up there, then press stat down here, okay? Then we're wanting to find regression, right? We're working with regression. So press five. Ah, and then look, there's an A, there's a B, there's an R, there's an X, and there's a Y. We know that we want A and B for this question. Okay, so let's press one for A. Okay, well, here's the solution book. Okay, so I'm gonna say A 
Well, let's first write out what we want. I think it's always good. It's always good to give your marker an indication of the way you're thinking, right? Because how on earth must they know when they're coming in cold to what you've written, right? Um, and you can round that off to two decimal places, okay? Which is negative 194.88, okay? Um, and then B, let's find B. Again, we go shift stat. We go to regression again, but this time we want B. Right, we don't want A, we've already got A. So I'm typing in B here. Again, let's just round that off to two decimal places. Okay, so now we've got those, um, all the parameters that we want, right? We've got A, which is our constant. Okay, and then we've got B. And there we go. We've found our least squares regression line. Do you see that? Right? So the very important thing here is typing it in correctly, knowing how to manipulate. I just want you to see that. Knowing how to manipulate, right? So that we can get to this final answer over here. And then making sure you write out the least squares regression line. Because sometimes what happens is students forget to actually write this, this last step out, right? You can't just get A and B. You have to show how it fits into the least squares regression line. Okay, so that's 1.1. Let's now do 1.2, right? So it says, if a person earns 14,000 Rand per month, predict the monthly repayment that the person could make, right, towards a motor vehicle. So it's basically saying, use this least squares regression line, sub in an X value, right, of, remember X values are monthly income, so sub in an X value of 14,000 and see what your Y value will be. Okay, so this is an interesting one because all they're asking you to do here is literally, right, they're literally asking you to just demonstrate that you understand the relationship. Okay, so one thing that's important with stats that I always say to my students, which they often forget, is that you should have a feeling for the stats that you're doing, right? Don't, like, when you look at this data, you should say, oh, I can see that as income increases, Right? As income increases, the amount that someone spends on their monthly, their monthly repayments for their car increases. You should just be able to see that relationship. Okay? And sometimes it is a little bit difficult, but I want you to start thinking about stats critically. Don't just look at numbers and be like, okay, I'm just going to methodically put it into my calculator and do whatever. I want you to think about what's happening. Okay? So we know right, with 14,000, it probably should be somewhere between 3,000 and 3,500, right? Should be, should, should be round about this realm, okay? Because we can see that those there's 13,500 and 1,500, right? So we know 14 sits somewhere over here, so it should be somewhere in the 3,000s, okay? And it's important to um, do math like this because doing math in and of itself is not helpful. You should be able to know and to interpret what you're doing and the meaning that you can get from it, okay? So... Do you see here? I told you it should be somewhere in the 3,000s, right? So it's 3,793.12 and 12 cents, okay? So it's a little bit more than the 15,000 that we have here. But remember, with the least squares regression line, what you're doing, let me just draw a picture for you, is you're saying, okay, there's a bunch of data here, okay? And a least squares regression line is saying, well, what is the general trend? Okay? And this is basically saying, what is the general trend? This is a straight line, remember? This is in the same form as y equals mx plus c, right? It is a straight line. So basically, a least squares regression line finds the general trend between the data. So not all the data points hit the, the line necessarily, right? Some of them do, some of them don't, right? But not all of them do, but it finds the general trend, right? Sorry, my Heidi dolls are being the most loud outside. Um, or the loudest, sure, my English sometimes. Okay, all right, so that's basically what we're looking at, okay? So now we've done 1.2, we've demonstrated that we understand what the least squares regression means. Let's now go on to 1.3. So 1.3 says, determine the correlation coefficient between the monthly income and the monthly repayment of a motor vehicle. Okay, so this is basically what I put in words earlier, where I said, well, as your monthly income increases, your monthly repayments on a car increases, which means that, as you become wealthier, you're probably you're more likely to be able to afford a more expensive car and a more expensive monthly repayment. Okay, so what we do, we go back here. Our, da our data is still in here. We haven't deleted any of it. Let's go back to stat. Okay, and let's go back to regression. Okay, 
to where we were. But this time we don't need A, we don't need B, we want R, right? R is our correlation coefficient, right? Correlation coefficient. So press 3 and look, our correlation coefficient is 0 0.94696. Oh, goes on forever, right? So we can just write in here R equals 0 0.9469. Six. You don't have to write all of that. You can just then round it off to two decimal places. Now, before we move on, they haven't asked us to interpret it, but I want us to interpret it because it's important, right? A correlation coefficient of 0 0.95 means that it is positively correlated and there is a strong correlation, okay? So it's saying as the one goes up, the other one goes up. We can see that. That's what positive correlation means, right? And strongly means that the, when one goes up, the other one does go up, right? And it goes up quite markedly, okay? So that is what that 0 0.95 means, okay? It's important to understand what that means. So I'm just going to put you, I'm going to say a strong positive correlation, okay? It's describing how these two things interact with each other. Now, let's go to the last question of this question. It says, a person who earns, let me make sure you can see what I'm saying, good. A person who earns 18,000 Rand per month has decided um, has to decide whether to spend 9,000 Rand as a monthly repayment of a motor vehicle or not. So they basically, they want to spend half of their income on a car. That's crazy. Okay, if the above information is a true representation of the population data, which of the following would um, the person most likely decide on? Okay, so... We have to basically, they're saying, based on the stats you've had, yeah, based on what you've drawn from these stats, should they be doing this or should they not be doing this? So let's read our options. It says, yes, they should spend 9,000 Rand per month because um, there is a very strong positive correlation between the amount earned and the month and the monthly repayment. So we know that there is a very strong positive correlation. That's correct. But that doesn't necessarily mean they should spend there. So let's just put a question mark there not to spend 9,000 Rand per month because there is a very weak positive correlation. So we know that's wrong because we know that it's not weak. It's a very strong positive correlation. That's what we talked about already. So it's not B. It says spend 9,000 Rand per month because the point 18,000 and 9,000 lies very near to the least squares regression line. Well, let's test that, right? So if I say here with my least squares regression, <clears throat> let me just remind myself of what it is. One nine four six point is it eight eight plus zero point four one, and I'm putting eighteen thousand in there. Let's just see what he should be spending. <clears throat> okay, or oh, she or he doesn't say um, what they identify as. Okay. Um, okay. So they should be spending this much, according to our least squares regression. <clears throat> so it doesn't substantiate <clears throat> um, uh, spending 9,000, right? Because this is almost, I mean, this is substantially less, right? It's a, a lot less than 9,000. So no, it's not C, okay? And then also here, I think it can't be A either, right? Because it says spend 9,000 Rand per month because this is a very strong. So... <laughs> That's not what our stats are telling us. Our stats are not telling us to spend 9,000 Rand. It's telling us to spend much less than 9,000 Rand. So it says not to spend 9,000 Rand per month because the point 18,000 and 9,000 9, lies very far from the least squares regression line. I would say yes. That makes sense to me because 9,000 is very far from 5,000. You should only sp be spending 9,000 if you're earning more than 20,000, right? Much more than 20,000, okay? So our answer here is D, okay? So they wanted us to display here that we understand the least squares regression line, right? That we understand the correlation, that the correlation coefficient that we've actually calculated, right? And that we can use both of those pieces of information to tell us something, to, to help us advise someone on whether they should make a decision or not, okay? So it's important to remember that stats is very practical, Okay, and I hope that you understood that through this question. Okay, so that's that. Question one done. Uh, question two is also in stats. So we'll go and we'll do that now. Okay, I hope that was helpful. See you in the next one, guys. Cheers.